Can we just take a moment to appreciate 90s gaming? Hey guys, how's it going? Welcome back to another video. So if you're a regular viewer of the channel so far, you'll know that I've gone through several monitor setups over the past year to the plight of my own wallet. I did my first monitor review about seven months ago on the LG 38 GN950B, a 38 inch ultra wide gaming monitor, which I still love to this day. My girlfriend currently uses it today and she loves it as well. I ended up going to a dual monitor setup, which I made a video on and I'll link that down in the description below. And most recently as featured in my latest desk setup video, I went to a single panel, the LG 32 GQ950B, which is a 4K gaming monitor. For a secondary display, I just used my laptop and I propped it up on top of a laptop riser. Well, here's the thing. Every now and then I would go back and I would game on that 38 inch ultra wide. And of course, I started to miss having that monitor as a gaming monitor and also as a productivity monitor. There's something really awesome about playing games on an ultra wide specifically for me, that 38 inch size, as I find it to be the perfect size for an ultra wide monitor and the 3840 by 1600 resolution versus the traditional 1440p ultra wides, you get a little bit of extra vertical space, which is really appreciated. Obviously, switching between monitors isn't great for my wallet, but it's probably good for this channel. These things aren't cheap, of course, and well, monitor manufacturers don't know that I exist, so they don't really send these things out for me to review. So I ended up looking to buy yet another LG 38 GN950B, and to my surprise, it really hasn't gotten any cheaper since the first time I bought it. In fact, it's slightly more expensive at this point than the first time I bought it. If you watched my review on the LG 38 GN950B, I did mention in that video that there was a very similar panel to it, dare I say almost identical in terms of its specs and its size, the Dell Alienware A. W3821 DW. Try saying that three times fast. I was able to find it for a much cheaper price than the LG panel, so I decided to pull the trigger on it. And of course, well, I want to talk about it. Note that this panel has been on the market since late 2020, so it's not exactly new or anything, but I still feel it's worth talking about. Let's dive into the video. First, let's start with the unboxing. Included in the box is the monitor itself, one DisplayPort cable, one mini DisplayPort cable, one HDMI cable, and one USB-B 3.2 Gen 1 upstream cable for the USB hub. More on that later. My first impressions of the monitor is that the design is fantastic. This is the first Alienware product that I ever owned, and now that I'm seeing this one, I really wished I had purchased an Alienware product back in the day before they were acquired by Dell, if only for nostalgia's sake. The clean white design, the 38 moniker at the back, and the LED accents of both the monitor stand and the Alienware logo are great. Alienware calls this lighting control system AlienFX, which allows for customizable lighting zones, lighting effects, and even game integration. The software is controlled through AWCC, or Alienware Command Center. The second thing that I immediately noticed is there was no external power brick. I love this as, well, who needs an extra power brick around when you can use a single power cable? The included monitor stand is nice. As mentioned, it has the alien effects lighting at the back, though it's not something you'll really see when the monitor is sitting on your desk. It has support for height adjustment, swivel, and tilt adjustment, though its tilt adjustment is focused on the positive direction with a 21 degree tilt limit with only a five degree tilt limit on the negative tilt. Bonus points here for swivel support. Both the stands of the LG 38 GN950B and the LG 32 GQ950 lack support for this, and both are considered premium monitors. 
It has support for VESA 100x100 mounting, which is great because it's something I definitely take advantage of. All right, so it was one thing to take a look at the monitor from all these different angles, but I really needed to start using it. I removed my previous monitor, which as a side note, that 32 inch screen weighs 21 pounds, which is four pounds heavier than this new 38 inch panel. So I decided to get a quick workout with it while I was at it. Let me tell you, once the monitor was in place, it just felt right in here again. For my desk size, a 38 inch panel just feels perfect. I hope you'll agree. The Dell Alienware AW3821DW weighs 12.1 kilos with the stand, or about 26.7 pounds. The panel itself weighs 7.9 kilos, or about 17.4 pounds. It's a pound heavier than my previous 38GN950, but as mentioned, it's four pounds lighter than the 32-inch GQ950, and about a thousand pounds lighter than any other CRT I've owned in the last 20 years. For those of you not old enough to remember this, you'll probably think I'm joking. I'm not. It has a subtle 2300R curve, which in my opinion is great for this size of monitor. The monitor is technically 37 and a half inches in diameter and has a 21 by nine aspect ratio, though technically it's a 24 by 10 aspect ratio, though 21 by nine is generally what the industry uses for simplicity. The monitor has one DisplayPort 1.4 port, two HDMI 2.0 ports, the previously mentioned USB-B upstream port for the hub, and three USB-A downstream ports. There's also a headphone jack and an audio line out port. This one is helpful if, for example, you're connecting a console to the monitor via HDMI, which carries both audio and video, and you wanna send that audio signal to an external set of speakers. This isn't the greatest console monitor in my opinion, and I'll talk about that later, but the audio line out port is there if you need it. There's a few plastic slots to cable manage near the ports, which is nice, and a cover that you can slide over everything to keep it looking clean. Personally, I'm not a huge fan of the vertical mounting style, and I much prefer being able to put the cables into the ports horizontally as here, it can be hard to see where you're trying to connect your cables. I know, first world problems, but I thought I'd bring it up. If you're mounting this monitor on an arm, like I am, one tip is to ensure that your cables are not pulled back too tightly and have enough slack. This is because, after you put the cover on top of the cables, adjusting the position of the monitor might become difficult and you could potentially yank the cables out. The Alienware 3821DW is a QHD Plus nano IPS display with a max resolution of 3840 by 1600 and a max refresh rate of 144 hertz. The pixel density, as per the resolution, is about 111 pixels per inch. Before we talk about the other technical aspects of this monitor, I want to mention and emphasize that this monitor is G-Sync Ultimate certified, though it gets a bit fuzzy here. It's important to know that there are three tiers of G-Sync. The first is G-Sync compatible, which only provides a baseline VRR experience compatible with G-Sync. The LG 38GN950B, for instance, is G-Sync compatible. G-Sync compatible monitors don't have the G-Sync module and instead relies on the Adaptive Sync, or commonly known now as FreeSync protocol that's part of the DisplayPort and most recently HDMI standard. Effectively, this means that it's the GPU's responsibility to let the monitor know what refresh rate to use based on its own frame rate. In a nutshell, VRR, or variable refresh rate, reduces screen tearing. The second is G-Sync, in which the monitor has the G-Sync module built inside it. In this case, the module handles VRR instead of the GPU, among other things. This is better because the module itself reduces input lag due to handling the VRR instead of the GPU, and among other things, supports VRR across a wider refresh range with specific techniques to maintain VRR at low frame rates. 
The third is G-Sync Ultimate, which effectively is G-Sync, but with added features like, among other things, Full Array Local Dimming, or FALD for short, which allows the monitor to control the brightness of individual dimming zones, which improves the dynamic range of the monitor. G-Sync Ultimate monitors, at least originally, were certified for 1000 nits or higher peak brightness. But wait, let's hold up for a moment. Let's hold up for a moment. Things get fuzzy here though, as even though this monitor is G-Sync Ultimate certified, it only has 32 local dimming zones, which is significantly less than other monitors with full array local dimming. Can you see the look in my face? I'm, I'm, I'm disappointed. It's also only HDR 600, which is below the threshold or the original threshold of 1000 nits peak brightness. NVIDIA appears to have broadened the certification criteria for G-Sync Ultimate in order to accommodate a broader range of monitors. What you are getting here though is the G-Sync module, high refresh rates, low latency, wide color gamut, and HDR support, even if it lacks full array local dimming. We'll specifically talk more about HDR in a moment. This monitor has a contrast ratio of 1000 to 1, identical to its LG counterpart. In 2023, it's really lacking behind its mini LED backlighting and OLED counterparts, but it's still fine and gets the job done. Now this isn't limited to the AW3821DW or the 38GN950B. The inherent nature of IPS technology just isn't great for contrast ratio. In more detail, because of the way the liquid crystals are aligned and twisted when more or less voltage is applied, hence the name in-plane switch, this can lead to some light leakage which will affect the deeper blacks and ultimately the contrast ratio. The AW3821DW has a max refresh rate of 144Hz and a 1 millisecond greater gray response time on its extreme mode, though ghosting becomes a problem here, so it's really more like 4 milliseconds on the fast mode. For an ultra wide monitor like this, it's still pretty good, especially for non competitive gaming. With the Nano IPS display on the Alienware monitor, you're getting a 95% DCI-P3 color gamut and a 130% sRGB color gamut. As a side note, the Nano in this case means the nanoparticles that are applied to the backlight of the monitor in order to widen the color gamut. Having the DCI-P3 color gamut be a bit higher here would have been nicer as the 38GN950B has a 98% DCI-P3 color gamut, but only professionals working in color critical contexts would really care here. Okay, so this monitor has a peak brightness of 600 nits with 32 local dimming zones in comparison to the 38GN950B's 12 dimming zones. Though 32 is higher than 12, it's still pretty low, especially when compared to monitors with full array local dimming. And I'm not even talking about OLEDs here, for example, that's a completely different level of HDR capability. 32 isn't very high. The monitor has edge lit local dimming, which I guess is better than no local dimming at all. But edge lit local dimming is generally pretty bad as the LEDs around the screen lack the precision to control individual dimming zones. You also can't turn off local dimming when viewing HDR content. To me, this is a limitation, as you're effectively stuck with the monitor's decisions on which parts to darken and brighten, even if it doesn't always look perfect. This can actually cause haloing effects in some cases, as local dimming precision isn't very high. HDR isn't a strong suit of this monitor, and like the 38GN950, is the biggest issue I have with it. It's not terrible, but not great, and if you're looking for a great HDR capable monitor, this isn't it. Let's go back to what I really love about this monitor. Gaming. High refresh rates, low latency, the G-Sync module, VRR, with the Nano IPS display, all on this 38 inch screen makes playing video games on this monitor awesome. 
personally, I love the 3840 by 1600 resolution here. Unlike the traditional 1440 pixel high monitors, I appreciate the extra vertical space that this gives. I really wish that 3840 by 1600 was a more common resolution among gaming monitors. The AW3821DW offers game enhancing features, including a customizable on-screen timer, refresh rate tracker, and display alignment for multi-window gaming. The dark stabilizer feature adjusts the gamma for better visibility in darker game scenes. Apart from not being able to turn off local dimming for HDR gaming, specifically for console gamers here, is that the HDMI ports are not 2.1. At 3840 by 1600, you'll probably only be able to go up to about 75 Hz or so. If you're looking for a great console gaming monitor, the LG32 GQ950 is what I would choose as it supports 4K, HDMI 2.1, and high refresh rates. So with the Nano IPS display, good color gamut, and overall a lot of real estate on the screen, the AW3821DW makes a great productivity monitor as well. The extra vertical space, as I keep mentioning this over and over again, versus that traditional 1440p ultrawides is great for my work as a software engineer. I've recently made the switch to using NeoVim with Tmux for my code writing and editing experience, and I absolutely love managing buffers and panes on this monitor, as everything looks great with lots of real estate. Coming back from the 4K 32 inch monitor, I do notice the PPI difference, but at 111 PPI, things still look crisp. Text still looks good, and the extra screen space makes up for it. For content creation, this is fantastic for video editing, and visualizing large parts of your timeline is really helpful. For example, when scripting, I usually like having Notion open on one side and a movie playing on the other. Speaking of movies, Watching movies and TV shows on this monitor is great. Whether the movie uses the full screen, or if I'm watching an older show that doesn't, it's as good a panel as any to chill out and watch your favorite show on. There are five controls on this monitor, including a joystick to navigate the menu. Apart from the standard fair brightness, contrast, and input selections, you can adjust game modes, including toggling the aforementioned dark stabilizer mode and variable backlight, which is effectively the local dimming. From the menu, you can also adjust the previously mentioned Alien FX lighting. The joystick feels fairly intuitive to use, and as far as the other buttons, they give quick access to different menus once pressed. Now, as I mentioned with the 38G950, the AW3821DW is a bit of a niche monitor, in my opinion, because I'm not entirely sure how many people will be looking specifically for an ultra-wide gaming monitor that's also good at productivity tasks. For those of you who are okay with not having the best HDR monitor, you want a bit more vertical space versus the traditional 1440p ultrawides, and want a monitor that's great at both gaming and productivity, this one might be for you. I want to emphasize that while, for example, the new Odyssey Super Ultrawide monitors are nice with their mini LED technology, I still think that this monitor still has a lot to offer, especially at its current price. At the time of this recording, the AW3821DW can be had for roughly $1,249 Canadian dollars, which is what I bought this for, and in my opinion, is a really great deal for an ultra-wide gaming and productivity monitor. The 49-inch Odyssey G9, for example, is still around $2,300 Canadian. The new 57-inch Neo G9 that will be released soon is about $3,300 Canadian. And even, as I mentioned before, the 38 gn 950 b is still listed at just over $2,000 Canadian. If you're looking for a monitor like this, and you can find it at around $1249, maybe even $1299 Canadian, I would seriously consider the Alienware. Yeah, 
even in 2023. Not surprisingly, my overall impressions of the AW3821DW, I don't know how many times I've said that much, AW3821DW, yes, I've memorized it by now. Not surprisingly, really mirror my overall impressions that I had with the LG 38G and 950B. Apart from HDR and some of the issues surrounding the rigidity of the local dimming settings with HDR, I still think, even in 2023, that this monitor is still a really good choice for both gaming and productivity. And what's not to like? High refresh rates, little to no input lag with the G-Sync module, good color gamut with the Nano IPS display, all with a lot of screen real estate. And personally, and I'll say this again, I do think that 38 inches is a great size for a monitor. The only other real gripe I have has more to do with the age of the monitor as it has HDMI 2.0 instead of HDMI 2.1 ports, so the high refresh rates are limited to DisplayPort. If you're looking for a great gaming and productivity monitor, it's really hard to argue against this one, especially at its current price, assuming of course that Dell doesn't raise them again. And that's about all I have for this one, guys. If you like this video, please go ahead and hit that like button and please consider subscribing and hitting that bell icon so you know when I release new videos. These videos, of course, aren't cheap to do for me as, well, these monitors and these products come out of my own pocket. Dell, LG, etc. don't sponsor me, they don't know who I am, and of course, they don't send me out these monitors so that I can review them for you, especially new monitors. But if there's just a couple of small things you can do in order to help me make more videos like this is to hit that like button and subscribe to the channel as doing both of those things really does help me out and really supports the channel. If you're interested in getting more regular updates from me, you can find me over on Twitter slash X and Instagram at 2 thomas I've got more tech, desk setup, and gaming content planned as usual, so please stay tuned for that. As always, thank you very much for watching, and I'll catch you in the next one. See ya.